Hi everybody, this is Saad. This is a uh, overview of uh, my final project uh, on object classification of photo of a photo using instant segmentation. Uh, for this project, I leveraged a framework that's available from GitHub called Mask RCNN. It's built on top of Keras and TensorFlow, uh, and it's uh, an implementation of a paper by that very same name. We'll get a little bit more into the uh, the architecture of that in a, in a little bit. Uh, for this project, I uh, leveraged it and extended it um, to be able to train a single class and a multi-class instance, uh, excuse me, multi-class uh, on a set uh, for instant segmentation. Um, I leveraged data sets that I downloaded from ImageNet that I annotated. Um, the problem that we're going to solve or that we're going to work with here is to um, do instant segmentation. So instant segmentation is being able to detect one or more objects in a photo, uh, being able to discern their class and differentiate them, being able to label their instances and uh, generate a mask that identifies those instances. As I mentioned, the, the underlying um, uh, architecture that the framework implements uh, is um, based on faster RCNN, uh, and it is an extension to it and does it in a side branch. Uh, various technology that I leveraged um, for this project, you can see um, it heavily required uh, some image processing tools, and in particular, OpenCV was needed, uh, Pi Cocoa tools were needed, and the IMAUG, the image augmentation, was used by the MASK RCNN uh, framework. In order to do uh, annotation, I uh, leveraged the VGG image annotator, or VIA. Uh, the data set that I used, I used two batches of two different types of data. One batch uh, consisted of different wolf species. Uh, there were uh, close to 1,400 of them, but for this project I only annotated, I was only able to get 171 annotated. The training set size was 15 meg. The um, second batch was a collection of different street signs uh, and an even smaller set there. Um, let me quickly show you uh, what it means to do uh, annotation. So uh, this uh, tool, it's a very quick, lightweight tool, essentially it's a web page, it's an image annotator. Um, once you download your images, you can select an image. Um, you can uh, select a region shape, and then from that you can begin outlining the image. Uh, you also need to specify uh, region attributes. Uh, I use these region attributes when I load these images. The one uh, key piece here is the object name. Um, let me show you what uh, the format actually looks like. So uh, here's a typical image. The uh, export the via uh, tool exports both as JSON and as CSV. Uh, I was using the JSON format. And the key attributes that uh, that uh, were leveraged here, that I leveraged, were the file name, which specified the location of the image on the disk, the all points X and all points Y um, array. These taken together represent the polygon of the mask. From that, the bounding boxes are derived, uh, and the label of, of the region. So each region has a set of polygons and a label. Uh, both together are used and consumed when loading um, into the model for, for training. Now, uh, let me show you an example uh, notebook of what that entailed. In order to build, to do training, uh, I'm showing an example here of a notebook that I'm providing that does multi-class training. Uh, this, is, this one is for signs. Uh, first, I had to define a configuration file that, that specified uh, how I wanted to do training. I had to override the data set uh, object 
that mask our CNN uh, uses. Here the two key methods that I provided are load annotation, which reads in a list of annotations, and from that pulls in, determines what class it is, pulls in the um, image and the polygons, and, a pass and, and calls uh, a superclass method to be able to add the image. In addition, had to implement this load mask function. It does what, it's, what it sounds like. It loads the mask, determines the mask from the polygons. Um, likewise here, uh, it's able to look up the uh, region, the class of the region, by first uh, leveraging the object name and then looking up in a map how that maps to a class ID uh, and returning that from the call. So the data generator will leverage both of these. Uh, to support the data generator, I added a couple of uh, uh, helper functions that uh, uh, allowed me to store the data in one place and to split it up across both uh, training and validation. Um, and additional, additionally, I specified, I leveraged AMG image augmentation, which is a pretty flexible tool. Uh, the two key features uh, of this tool are, uh, it, it is pretty flexible, gives, gives you a lot of power, a lot of uh, ability to, to define how you want the images to be annotated, but also um, it was required by mask uh, CRNN that the, it, it had to run uh, in a deterministic way so that the same augmentation can be applied both to the image as well as to the mask. Um, so training the image uh, implies instantiating the model. Uh, you can see the model here is leveraging the ResNet model, the 100 ResNet 101. Uh, now, since I'm working with a very small data set, I leveraged the pre-trained model. Uh, to, and, and um, you'll see the results later that showed some very good uh, results. Uh, the uh, ResNet model is pretty large. You can see what Kara has printed out here. Uh, let's see. So here's a convenience method to actually do the training. Uh, down below, um, it first um, reads in the data set using those functions that I created, uh, passes them into a mask CRNN helper method, which uh, internally calls the Keras fit generator. Uh, it also passes the augmenter uh, that's being used, the one that I showed earlier. Um, now, for this model, we defined that uh, since we're, we're, we're working with a pre-trained model, we're, we're just going to uh, unfreeze the heads, the top of it, to just to train our instances. You can see here are some of the results of the training. Uh, this particular run was a 75 epic run, lasted for about an hour and a half. Um, uh, now, um, as I glanced very quickly, the the framework itself uh, is built on top of an, it's an implementation uh, of the mass uh, RCNN paper as well as faster uh, RCNN. Uh, so there there are multiple um, networks, multiple modules. In, at play here, and um, the multiple loss functions. You can see here I printed out what the various loss functions that we have access to. This is a, um, a some for the, the general loss, some for the uh, regional proposal network, some for the uh, uh, bounding box, um, and also as well as the the uh, um, uh, mask uh, RCNN. Um, now, for each run, I do print out the summary of the various epics, and you can see here it's it's what to be it's what to be, what's to be expected with such a small set of data. For this set, it was only 85 images, uh, split 80 80 percent training, 20 uh, percent validation. So there's really not that much um, instances here. Now I'm going to switch gears and go back to a um, uh, no, a different notebook that I have. Uh, this one in particular shows um, uh, an actual running of, of to a, the detection. So here I have, um, uh, I'm using a wolf data set, uh, a set of wolf species that I downloaded. Uh, this one had 171, uh, I think, uh, images in total, 171, 172 is what 
finally got to. Uh, again, split 80-20 between test and excuse me between training and validation. Uh, I have already pre-trained. Excuse me. Uh, this is already working on the pre-trained model. Also, 75 epics. Um, let's see where is that. Um, here is the data set that is loaded. You can see uh, 136 of them of the images uh, are going to be were from training, 35 from validation. Uh, I did load the model. Yeah, here it is. It's it's the 75 um, epic run that I did earlier. Uh, the weights are already preloaded. Um, this is uh, a sample image uh, that I, I run tests against, and here's the detection results. On a Mac, this does take a little time. On my GPU system, it took about a quarter of a second. Uh, results are pretty good, um, except for on the right here, there are actually two wolves, but it uh, showed it as one. Um, the, let's step through this notebook a little bit more. Um, this is where I left off. So um, now what we're going to do next is display some more of the the uh, results. Um, it's going to be uh, a little bit slow. So here we're going to randomly select uh, another image from the data set. So this is from the, the actual training set. Uh, this this is an image that has a mask and annotated, uh, some annotations already associated with it. Uh, this is uh, the prediction of that image. It, um, it predicted as, as a wolf through, a, through the bounding box as well as the mask. Now we're going to go through some of the various steps. Uh, and this is based on uh, a, notebook, a Python uh, Jupyter notebook that um, uh, the mask RCNN uh, uh, repo uh, has. Uh, I took this notebook, augmented it for my purposes, changed it a bit. Uh, this version here you can get off of my um, uh, GitHub, uh, but the original you can get from the original mask RCNN uh, GitHub net that, that shows a demo using Bubbles. So let's go back here. Let's, let's go through the process of uh, various steps that were done uh, by this network, by this uh, the various regional propose, proposal network would run. It would generate uh, some proposals, regions of interest. Uh, typically, these would be on the order of about a, a, a thousand proposals. Um, this is an example of, of a proposal in a bounding box. Um, the predictions, let's see, we're going to limit these since there are so many. We're going to limit them only to uh, a hundred. Uh, that would be next. Let's run that. So these are the various um, uh, anchor boxes. Uh, actually, excuse me. These are the various anchor boxes. So I limit these to a hundred. Um, now this is going to be a refinement of those anchor boxes. This is going to be reduced to about fifty. Um, It looks like I had trouble with that. I need to come back to that. So let's show the final. Oh, here it is. Uh, I'm not sure why the previous image didn't work, but here's the, the refinement that showed the, the various anchor boxes. Um, the next step after doing these various anchor boxes, it's going to uh, reduce the number of proposals down. Um, it's going to classify the proposal. Uh, for each one, it's going to classify. Uh, now, of those, some of those are going to come out um, as being background. Uh, those that fall into uh, background are going to be uh, filtered out. So here, essentially, we're just rerunning the detection again. Um, so let's go over that again, step by step. Um, there are approximately 979 uh, proposals. Uh, that are background, 21 of them, it thinks, uh, fall into the category classified as, as being a wolf. Um, these are some of the images uh, limited to um, a few subset. These are the ones that it classified as, as a wolf. And I think um, the max was 200, but it only, uh, the, uh, 
it only classified 21, so this is pro it's showing about 21 here. Now, um, some of these bounding boxes are going to be further refined a bit to be a little bit closer, so you can kind of see how here it shifts. The bounding box uh, tightens up a little bit. Uh, did I run that yet? Yeah. Next step is it's going to uh, filter out all the background uh, detections. So those detections that were classified as background, it's going to remove them. You can see now we're down to the 21 that it, it, it recognized it classified as being a wolf. Uh, next it's going to use the threshold, which is right now set at 0.9, about 90%, um, and it's going to remove uh, any uh, it's only going to keep those detections that are above, that are at or above this threshold. So that's going to reduce it, it down to 11. So we now have 11 uh, candidates. Now it's going to do non-mask suppression. Basically, it's going to do um, intersection over union to determine which of those remaining bounding boxes actually um, are best fit for the wolf image. And after this, it's down to one, so it's able to reduce it down to just one image. And that was the image that we saw earlier. Let's go ahead and print, out, print that out again. Uh, now we're going to show the masks. Um, so these are the various masks. This is the target mask that is fed to training based on the annotation that was done. Uh, next is going to be what the model predicted. Um, Again, this is running on my Mac, so it's a little bit slow. Uh, all the training was done on a uh, uh, Ubuntu system with uh, um, a 1080 Ti GPU. Here is the predicted mask, which is not that far off, a little uh, blurry. Let's see if I'll clean this up a little bit. So it's uh, not, too, not too far off. So uh, last thing I wanted to show is um, we could use Keras, and there's some handy uh, convenience functions that uh, the mask RCNN framework provides that uh, to help with some debugging um, to be able to poke into some of the activations and uh, get us, get some insight as to um, how the system is uh, is actually working. So let's let's get these running and um, see about uh, uh, the results. So here's the original image. Uh, here's the uh, input into uh, one of the top layers. Uh, in ResNet, you can see uh, one of the convolutional uh, outputs here. Actually, I only print out three, three, three rows uh, corresponding to three different uh, ResNet outputs. Thank you.